Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In this video, we're going to be showing you something really useful, and that is how to HDR blend images manually. In the last few videos, we ran through how to use luminosity range masking to get more precise hair cutouts when traditional tools don't get the job done. However, you might not be aware that luminosity range masking is also a great way to perform HDR. In fact, Affinity itself suggests to use this tool for blending bracketed images together to achieve greater control than performing an automatic HDR merge. As such, I thought it would be worthwhile to demonstrate the basic steps of manual HDR merging using just two images and comparing the results to automatic HDR. So let's get right into it. The first step before performing HDR merging is to assess whether HDR is needed in the first place. Here we have two bracketed images of an extremely high contrast scene. The first image is underexposed by two stops to properly expose the highlights. The second image is normally exposed for the subject. Let's work with the underexposed image first. As you can see, as I try to recover detail in the shadows, large parts remain in pure black, suggesting that shadow detail has been clipped and no detail is present. Next, let's work with a normal exposed image. I'll try to recover detail in the overblown highlights. Once again, it is not a great result as reducing the exposure merely turns the highlights into gray, demonstrating that no data is present in the highlights. Given these results that no single image can show all of the details, it seems that HDR would give better results for this problem. After confirming that HDR is in fact needed, let's try automatic HDR merging to see how it performs. I'll click File, New HDR Merge, I'll add the files. Once that's done, the merging process, also known as tone mapping, commences. There, tone mapping has completed. As you've seen, that didn't take much effort. However, while the overall result is generally good, I do have a few reservations. First, the tone mapping has made the image a bit too bright, revealing more noise and appearing more processed than I would have liked. Second, the colors and contrast are also slightly muted, more than the ideal. Next, let's try manual HDR merging to see if it gives better results. The first step in this process is to add each image as a layer. To do that, I'll simply copy and paste. Note that I have placed the underexposed image on top of the normally exposed image. This is just my preference. You can perform the blending in any order. To avoid confusion, I'll rename both layers. The next steps are exactly the same as that used in my previous videos on the luminosity range mask. I'll add a compound mask. As a reminder, the compound mask allows for adding masks together to improve the quality of the final mask. Next, I'll add a luminosity range mask. The luminosity range mask creates a mask based on luminosity values, the shadows, highlights, and midtones of the image. Once again, for those who don't know about this, I'll leave a link on my previous video. When performing exposure blending or manual HDR, typically we want to get the best parts of each bracketed image and make it appear in the merged image. In this case, we want the highlight details to come from the underexposed image as it has the properly exposed highlights and the shadow detail to come from the normally exposed image as it has the properly exposed shadows. To achieve that result, how should the luminosity mask look like? The luminosity mask should show the highlights primarily in white while the shadows primarily in black. Let's do that. I'll click preview so that I can see a preview of the mask, I'll manipulate the graph to ensure those criteria are met. There, that's the final mask. 
As you can see, the highlights do appear in white and the shadows do appear in black. With the mask done, let's view the output. I'll uncheck preview. I'll close the dialog. As you can see, the blending is mostly successful. The properly exposed highlights appear alongside the properly exposed shadows in the merged image, which is the result we wanted all along. Unfortunately though, upon close inspection, not everything is perfect. As you can see, detail and contrast has been reduced in the final image, degrading image quality. What is the reason for this? The reason for this is the poor quality of the luminosity mask, which is much too detailed, particularly in the highlights. To get a better looking blend, the mask should, as a general rule, appear smooth with minimal details. So how do we fix this? Thankfully, Affinity offers the power to improve any mask with the use of compound masks. Let's do that now. I'll create an empty mask. I'll ensure that the mask appears as a sublayer inside the compound mask. If it is not, feel free to drag it inside. As discussed in previous videos, at this point, the empty mask has no effect on the compound mask. The default operation in a compound mask is add, and since the empty mask consists of entirely zeros, adding an empty mask to any mask will result in the same mask. So let's fix that. With the empty mask selected, I'll paint white on the problem areas, which are primarily located in the highlights. For more natural looking results, I recommend using a soft brush with low opacity. As you can see, after this step, details are better emphasized and local contrast better improved, making for a more pleasing result. To view the difference, Let's view the compound mask by option clicking on the thumbnail. Here is the compound mask before brushing. And here is the compound mask after brushing. Notice how the mask was made smoother via the brushing operation. Let's do the final comparison. Here is the original. Here is the automatic HDR result. And here is the manual HDR result. Which one do you think looks better? Let me know in the comments. While both look good, in my opinion, the manual HDR result best represented what my eyes saw that day and has less of the process look you get with the automatic HDR. So to summarize, when performing HDR with Affinity Photo, you now have two options, automatic and manual. Use automatic if you don't want to do too much work and don't mind having less control over the final output, and use manual if you do require precise control over the final output, but don't mind the more time-consuming process. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any questions on this process, or what is your favorite method of exposure blending? Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.